Hey everyone, um, I'm Pradeep. I'm joined by Toma from OpenAI, and we are super excited to talk about um, Triton on Blackwell architecture. Um, for those who have, who don't know what Blackwell is, Blackwell is NVIDIA's latest data center scale architecture, which is meant to push the boundaries of Gen AI and accelerated computing in general. So, as a start, we'll first go into the compute innovations that happened as a part of the Blackwell GPU architecture itself. And then we'll move on to some of the awesome work that we've been doing with OpenAI as a part of the collaboration on Blackwell, and then some plans looking ahead in terms of what we have in store. So what is Blackwell? So the picture that you see is a, a shot of two Blackwell GPUs and one gray CPU that's there. So the Blackwell GPU is our largest GPU that we've ever built, and it is built with the goal of bringing real-time generative AI performance on trillion-plus parameter models with scalability and efficiency as primary goals. So with that said, Blackwell also offers a lot of innovations in terms of improving your scalability thanks to the fifth generation NVLink, which is super fast. It's about 1.8 terabytes per second. And we also have improvements at scalability for the reliability due to the RAS engine that's built in. And also now with the new decompression engine, you have better C2C bandwidth as a result of communication happening between the gray CPU and the Blackwell GPUs themselves. So let's talk some numbers. Like to give you perspectives on how big Blackwell is, Blackwell is two and a half times the size of Hopper. Like if you thought Hopper was big, Blackwell is massive. It's built using 208 billion transistors, and it's built on TSMC 4 nanometer, custom optimized for NVIDIA, of course. And the result of it is that you get colossal performance, which is essentially Moore's Law is no longer providing you free lunch. So by attaching two Blackwell dice together using a custom interface, which is super high bandwidth, you get a net result of over 20 petaflops of FP4 AI performance. And combined with the innovations on the memory side, which is essentially eight sites of HBM3E delivering eight terabytes per second to feed this beast, essentially, you effectively get more than an order of magnitude performance for trillion plus parameter models because the whole GPU, as you will see next, operates at a rack scale. So what do I mean by that? This picture that you see on the right, essentially, is a GB200 NVL72 rack. And when I say this is the new unit of compute, what I mean to say is that you can see the rack itself has a bunch of compute trays. I think it has 18 trays, each of them with Blackwell GPUs. And then in the middle, you also see the NV switch trays. These NV switch, switch trays essentially provide the fifth generation NVLink bandwidth, which operates at a rack scale, essentially bringing them all into one NVLink domain. What's the result of that? You get, as the numbers speak, you get performance training in the order of petaflops. Inference bandwidth, inference is also running super fast, essentially at real time for trillion plus models. And you also get, as a result of it, excellent all reduce and in-network computation and communication performance. So let's now move on to the actual innovations on the compute side. This is where things get sort of really cool. On the fifth generation tensor cores themselves, NVIDIA now supports what is known as micro-scale formats, which are defined by standard OCP. And these include three new formats, which is FP8, FP6, and FP4. Now, if we were to think about matrix multiply as essentially the rows of uh, A matrix and the columns of B matrix coming together, to accumulate to form a result, which is zoomed in and showed on the, on the corner there. You can think of them as the green pixels themselves are values which are stored in four bit values. And each of them is scaled by this blue value, which is a scaling vector. And even though the layout is sort of fixed between how many elements are scaled by what value, the benefit is that the dynamic range of the values that can be expressed in four bit is massively expanded because of this per element scaling. So as a result, what do we get? We get the benefits of having essentially better dynamic range from floating point, 
as well as massive energy savings that you would have gotten because you're doing this micro scale format instead of doing it the traditional way. So as a result of all of this is what is unlocking essentially the 20 petaflops of performance that I mentioned before. So going more exactly into the speeds and feeds of the GPU itself, as you can see, there are new formats that are introduced for the fifth generation tensor cores themselves, which is FP4, FP6, and FP8. Now, the FP16 and BF16 cores themselves have doubled in throughput compared to Hopper, running at around 2048 for, for Hopper, but 4096 for Blackwell. And this is in terms of max per clock per SM. So max is multiply accumulates. So if you are thinking in terms of flops, you can just multiply all of these numbers by two. So, and you can see that the FP8 also has doubled in performance, sitting at around 8K max and around 16K when you think about it in terms of sparse FP8. And finally, moving on, the two new formats, FP6 and FP4. FP6 runs at the same throughput as FP8, which is, again, 2x off the Hopper FP8 throughput. But the benefits there come from the fact that you're now saving both on capacity as well as bandwidth. And finally, sitting at an incredible 16,000 uh, max per clock per SM for dense and 32,000 max per clock per SM, FP4 sparse is phenomenal, providing 4x, band, 4x throughput improvement compared to Hopper FP8. Now, none of these mention about the increases to the SM frequency itself or the number of SMs. So all of that put together is what allows for this exascale computation that's possible on the Blackwell platform. We are super excited to see what you will all do with this Blackwell platform. Now I'll hand it over to my collaborator, Tomo. Thank you, Pradeep. Um, so now that you know what Blackwell is, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the collaboration of NVIDIA and OpenAI to bring awesome support and performance of Triton for Blackwell. So in the past four weeks, uh, NVIDIA and OpenAI have been collaborating, and we took uh, the existing speed of light uh, kernel uh, that we developed on Opera and that Powell um, showed earlier, and uh, we've been optimizing it for Blackwell. And as you can see on uh, the graph, which is not extremely meaningful, but we've been hard at work and we've, uh, we've been improving performance. We're not quite ready yet to show um, the, uh, the final performance result, or like, uh, but um, we, are, we are working hard and we expect that uh, we are going to eventually be able to, to show great performance on on Blackwell. Um, so uh, what to expect? So a lot of it is obvious, but it's, it's good to mention it. Um, the upper kernels are going to be obviously forward compatible uh, with Blackwell, as Triton, as always, will um, keep compatibility. Uh, there will be the same uh, TMS support uh, features uh, as on Hopper, and actually, as mentioned before, we are planning to graduate those out of experimental. Uh, and they are going to be critical to, to get good performance on Blackwell. Uh, and we are going to obviously leverage the new Tensor Core, um, the new Tensor Core um, that are available on Blackwell. Um, we are continuously adding optimizations to the pipeliner that may benefit either uh, both uh, Opera and Blackwell or only Blackwell to take advantage of the new architecture and uh, we are doing a lot more optimization uh, on, yeah, that will benefit uh, both architecture. Um, and as mentioned, GEM is not everything, and we are planning to support efficiently a large set of kernels that go way beyond um, just dense uh, MATMOL. So um, as a summary on like a, a few interesting information for everybody here, uh, Triton with Blackwell support will be open sourced um, uh, in early 2025. We don't have an exact date yet, but you can expect it to be open sourced around that time. And you can expect to have high performance uh, for GEM attentions, uh, including support for microscaling and mixed inputs, 
and of course everything beyond uh, just those uh, those kernels uh, with yeah. Um, and we're continuously uh, tuning performance for Blackwell and um, and pushing like Triton to be uh, to 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 uh, Triton to uh, to have the best performance on Blackwell as we have on on Hopper, and uh, I want to acknowledge uh, that's that's a teamwork and there's many people at OpenAI and Nvidia that uh, made it possible. And finally, I'll leave you with this uh, picture of a bunny. Why a bunny? Because just because it's cool. But what you can see is that uh, the MXFP uh, bunny is actually as good looking as the FP16 one. Uh, <laughs> So uh, I think uh, everybody's going to enjoy the support for microscale uh, formats in Triton once it's released. Thank you. Thanks.